Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate and welcome to the 354th episode of the show. Today's episode is one that I have been talking about was coming for about a month now. Because once I read this book, I said this has to become a podcast. And in fact, when I posted on Instagram and the blog that I had read this book and found it quite valuable, many of you, the listeners, asked, can you put this book Can you put the ideas that resonated with you into a podcast episode? And so I wanted to do that today. And I've partnered this topic, today's episode, with a petit plaisir that furthers one of the core concepts of what the author Kate Northrup is teaching, is bringing to our awareness about the story of money. So I hope that if you want to keep diving further into this, that the second, um, or the follow-up of the Petit Plaisir will help you do that as well, as it did for me. Because I actually happened to read these books at about the same time, and they just really overlapped beautifully. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about how to find your financial freedom, and the importance of understanding, writing, and then living your love story with money. Because I have a feeling that there have been moments in most of our lives where we didn't have a love story going on with money. We had a love hate, maybe relationship with money. We maybe didn't have any love at all for money. Um, there was desperation around money, whatever the negative connotation we have, have felt unconsciously or unwantingly about money. Um, whether we've overcome it or are overcoming it, this book gives us tools, not just to reach financial freedom, but then what do we do when we attain financial freedom? How can we deepen that? How can we make it even more so? So we're not just surviving, we are thriving in a way that is unique to each of us. And right there is why I have chosen this book as well to talk about because it overlaps in so many beautiful ways with what we talk about here on the podcast and on the blog, how to live a life of contentment. They go hand in hand how to reach and live a life of financial freedom and living a life of contentment. All right, so I want to begin with a quote from the book, which is titled, Money, a Love Story, Untangle Your Financial Woes and Create the Life You Really Want by Kate Northrup. And she wrote this book back in 2013. She has subsequently come out with another book just recently in 2020 that is wildly successful. So I encourage you to look her up. She's a wealth of inspiration um, with regards to financial freedom and finding your purpose and really just diving into a life you love living. But this was her first book. This is what started it all. And it is worth exploring. So here's the quote I want to begin our conversation with. And I will be sharing many quotes from the book throughout as they pertain to what we're talking about. Quote, to have a good relationship with money, you must know who you are and what your purpose is in this world. End quote. Find your purpose 
exercise your courage and you are on your way to financial freedom. Simple and true. Not easy, but definitely doable. For many of us, we were taught or it was modeled that money and how to approach money successfully is to solely look at it logically, requiring tangible proofs in order to know we are successful. So we're talking about the amount of money in our checking account, a lack of debt, the amount we have saved in our chosen mode of savings, the value of our quantifiable assets, our home, our business, et cetera, et cetera. Now, don't worry, I I am not going to say being without any money in the bank is okay. And as long as you have, insert whatever non-monetary example you have heard, because it's not true. You do need money to live and live well. However, to only look at the numbers is to dismiss the powerful engine of creating the financial freedom you and I, all of us, seek. Our lives are not Moneyball. While yes, a wonderful film that was, Moneyball, and it was a very successful approach to winning in the game of baseball, when we only look at the numbers we lose the core of what living well, a life of true wealth, is all about. To lose ourselves in the sole purpose for more money or having a certain amount of money in the bank before we, again, insert the big dream you have here, is to live without trust in the universe, to live without trust in ourselves. Again, don't worry, I'm not going to say ignore money and pursue whatever fleeting fancy your heart desires and the money will follow. But sort of, I am. It just doesn't happen overnight or within the window you would like it to. When I picked up Kate Northrup's book, Money, A Love Story, Untangle Your Financial Woes and Create the Life You Want, it was the book I was looking for for some time. But I wasn't able to find it because likely the most important lessons wouldn't have landed with such great effect as they did when I read it this past February. The truth about what financial freedom is, while yes, having to do with the monetary concept of literally earning more than we spend, it also involves the fuel for making money that is not logical or literal monetarily. It comes from finding and living a life of true contentment. And as we have talked about for years here on the podcast and the blog, stepping onto the path toward cultivating contentment begins with being courageous enough to get to know yourself, to dig in and learn the helpful skills that all of us can learn if we choose. And then with what we discover, being brave about the next step that may be entirely different or just slightly different than the path we were originally on. Here's another quote from the book. As with any relationship, the key to dealing with your financial woes lies within. End quote. The path to financial freedom, something that upon reading Kate's book, Money, A Love Story, I discovered that it overlaps in multiple ways with how to live simply luxuriously. How, you might be asking? Here's a list. Being present in your daily life is the power needed to discover your purpose. Discovering and then trusting what you can uniquely give to the world to positively contribute is the key that is immeasurable, monetarily and requires great courage to embrace and step forward toward as there are unknowns that will never be answered until you act. Knowing yourself is the priceless piece of information necessary to finding your calm and your direction. In other words, self-awareness is a crucial tool to learn and hone. Understanding your mind and being mindful of the stories that swirl around inside your mind and your ability to shift those unwanted stories to something more constructive is essential to attaining financial peace of mind. Where you place your attention and time is what will grow. And lastly, learning and practicing the skill of being content, accepting that you will not be happy all of the time, and finding calm with all sorts of emotion along the journey will ensure you make the best decisions for your financial present and future. So you can see these these concepts are going to reappear that we've talked about multiple times on this show and on the blog, 
they appeared in her book. And so therefore I was reading this book going, oh, she's speaking our language. She knows what this is about. And it just spoke to me. And I wanted to share because what is financial freedom, if we only look at the monetary part, is actually not complete. So what is financial freedom? Northrop defines it as, quote, to wake up every morning and do whatever calls to you, whatever the heck you feel like doing, is connected to your ability to feel free from financial strain and to be open to what your heart is telling you, end quote. The moment I read this definition, I had specifics in my mind of what this would look like or does look like for me. So what I want you to do, I'm going to ask you to do something right now, and, and you can pause this later and come back to it, but I really think this is going to help you trust that what you are imagining in your mind is possible. So maybe it's in a journal or maybe it's on your phone in the notes app or where, anywhere that you'll be able to check what you write down and remind yourself when you are doubting that seeking financial freedom is possible for you. What is it you want to be able to do without financial restraints holding you back? What is that life for you? And it will be unique to every single listener tuning in today. What do you want to be able to do that your heart is aching to do, but you aren't able to financially make it so? or at least you're telling yourself you're not able to do that right now. What would your daily life look like? What would a typical calendar year look like? So include the vacations, the work projects, your home life. What is it that you want to, to, to be doing in your life? How do you want to feel? That's really the core of it. It's less about, I need this, I need that, I want that, I want that. It's how do I want to feel and what will make me feel that way? If you can pinpoint that. Now, so for me, just some examples, having a cozy, welcoming home. I, 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 I see details everywhere. And so when I come home, my house and the details make a big difference in my contentment, my calm, my peace. Being able to travel, to, 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 to feed my curiosity. That feeling of, of being challenged, but also you know, experiencing awe in, in the cultures that really speak to me. Those are things that, yeah, require monetary um, investment. But at the same time, it's about prioritizing and understanding why is it that I seek that? What is the feeling that that gives me? It's not about a bucket list or impressing others. It's not about living a life that other people are like, wow, no, 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 no. This is about how it makes you feel. So whatever that is for you, Write that down somewhere. What does it look like for you? So I'm going to just pause for a second. And again, you can hit pause and you can take as much time as you need. But seriously, write this down somewhere. See it on paper. See it on a screen. See it concretely. See your future life because it can happen and be your present. It can be your life. It all begins with the story we accept as possible. And I want you to know and, I, and tell yourself that it is so, that you can live the life that continues to speak to you. Okay, so you're back. So you've taken a pause and you're back. You're ready to go through this list. I have 11 um, concepts that I want us to kind of journey through that will lead us to financial freedom. Okay, so let's dive into how to write a love story with money that brings you to a life of financial freedom. Number one. Understand what your current money story is that dances around in your mind. This will strengthen your awareness. Quote, the more we push up against something, the more we find it wrong and the more we wish it were different, the more powerless we are to create the reality that we desire. End quote. Knowledge about ourselves and the voice in our head and, and noticing how it speaks to us, whether it's critical or accepting, loving or harsh, etc. By knowing our story with the concept with money and where it all began is crucial to how we approach money today. Northrop begins by asking us to recall our first money memory. It might be a perfectly powerful one, and that is a wonderful aha connection to make as well. 
The key is to understand how you have been perceiving money and how that shows up in your life today. Once you have awareness about where your history and perception of money and its function in life began, you can then either change or enhance the story depending upon whether it serves you constructively or change it to help you live a fulfilling life. Now from this place, so you have your first money memory and it may not be anything, wow, it might not be a big deal. Like I said, it might not be hurtful at all. Um, It may not be anything significant, but now you're consciously thinking about it. Now it's going to be in the back of your brain and eventually something might just pop to the forefront of your mind one day. Like, oh, that's right. I remember that moment when I saw my parents or my dad or my mom or my grandfather, my whatever it was, you saw that and you internalized it. And who knows? Now, Northrop included some great examples of exactly how this can be internalized in a negative way. And it showed up not just in monetary life, but in relationships and unsuccessful relationships. So there's a lot of ideas that she's addressing here. So the key thing here is to start with your first money memory. Now, from this place, you're going to reframe your money situation as it stands today. If you are not happy or content with your monetary situation, so maybe you have too much debt, not enough money to purchase whatever the event or the thing or the item is, when you frame it in your mind in such a negative perspective with the negative concepts of not enough money, too much of something you view as a negative, you are creating negative energy that is deflating and will not help your progress to creating financial freedom. Northrop points out time and time again through examples that the reality is humans want to feel good. And if the thoughts we tell ourselves about our money situation are negative, that doesn't make us feel good. And we tend to avoid our money situation when what in fact we should be doing is directly addressing the situation so we can strive toward cultivating financial freedom. Quote, Our thoughts create our beliefs, which create our actions, which in turn create our reality, end quote. Now, what do I mean by reframing? Let's take debt, for example. You have it, you do not want it. Okay, so the plan to financial freedom, also known as being debt-free, is to pay off your debt. Makes sense. But berating yourself for being in debt is not going to make the journey fun, and it may, or likely will, slow down the process to achieving your goals as you may relapse or not pay as much as you would like or be distracted by temptation reframe this story. If, for example, the items and or events you purchased created beautiful memories, or it enabled an investment that would last a long time after the debt was paid off, or it brought comfort and calm, I want us to extend gratitude and acknowledge the lessons you learned along the way. I share this because as I was going through my own customization. There were things I definitely put on um, a credit card, but I also knew what I was doing at a time when I knew it was the right investment to make. And so as I was paying off those debts and it took a shift, I had to shift my mind. There was a part of me that was like, oh, that's not, nope, that is a good debt. That is okay. This is the right investment. And once I started shifting and extending gratitude for the opportunity I had a contractor who was going to do the work and he would do the work well. And so I brought quality items to be installed into my house that would last my lifetime. I realized, okay, reframe the story. That's good energy. You just have to return the value of what you've received. So this is the part where I love what she does in this book. It's all about shifting the story as we talked about, but it's this, it's this idea of acknowledging what you have already gained. So when you extend gratitude for those lessons that you learn, so that you are right where you are today monetarily, and you are now very much aware, if you're listening to this episode, you're very much aware that you want to strengthen your financial freedom. That is an awesome place to be at. You're going to reach financial freedom. You're on your way. And those events, even if you cannot find anything good about those expenses at this point in this conversation, they at least brought you to here where you're saying, I want to attain financial freedom and I know it's what's best for me. Give gratitude for that. 
Give gratitude for the lessons that brought you to where you are today. The only reason you still have debt is that you haven't. And I love this. This is what she writes in the book. And I, when I read this, I wrote, underlined it. I started. I was like, whoo, that's, that's helpful. Okay. She wrote, the only reason you still have debt is that you haven't exchanged the value for what you have already gained. And as soon as you do, the debt will be gone. Apply the lessons, extend gratitude, reframe the story so that it is constructive and makes you feel good. That is positive energy that can only help you attain financial freedom with certainty and far more quickly than if you were to be feeling bad about having debt. You may be thinking, really, Shannon, reframing money in such a way is unnecessary. Debt is debt. But the truth is, the debt remains either way. Why not see the opportunity and the gifts and the goodness it brought into your life, tangible or intangible? Because it has the potential to be the reason you will be inspired to attain financial freedom. And the sooner you get there, the more content you will be. I want to give an example of how reframing can appear in your life. So just recently, um, the last project of the house where I had to work with outside help, so contractors, interior designers, happened. It was installing my office curtains, actually. So I'm actually looking at my office curtains. And I'll give a tour of my office and these curtains um, in, in, uh, in May. Um, but it was the last big project over three, just over three years of projects. And so I intentionally, and it was after reading her book that I decided to do this, I intentionally carved out an entire day where I was just going to give gratitude to the journey, the process, this just acknowledging all that happened, most of it very constructive, all of it leading to the place I wanted to be. Yes, there was stress. Yes, there was wonderings and doubts and what's happening. Why is this happening? Oh, wow. Lots and lots of wow moments. And so I took a day for the most part. And so we got the house really clean. And I treated myself a little bit too. I, I went out to a movie in the middle of the day. And I came home with the weekly groceries, some fresh flowers to put around the house. And I made I made a simple meal, really. It was sole um, and roasted vegetables and, and uh, black rice. Very simple. A meal that I have had before, but it was one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Had a glass of wine. And I just took a moment to acknowledge what had been given and the value that I had gained. And I still have a few debts to pay off for the projects, um, but I've been making a lot of progress. And so it just gave me that much more motivation to really drill down and attain the financial freedom because I still have to give some value back because I have received so much. And that has helped me to really prioritize, but also find being more disciplined in paying that debt down more quickly, because I now I'm looking around me, and I've always actually been doing this since I've stepped into this house, been so grateful to have this house be my home. But it's a way of ensuring that I never take it for granted. And that I extend gratitude for the investment that I have made. So it's, it's just an idea, but it's a way to shift it in your mind, in your mental conversation to yourself. And if you talk about it with other people, as I'm talking about it with you, it also becomes a constructive conversation, not one that you're dwelling on, not one you're whining about. And you say, yep, this is where I'm at. And this is what I'm grateful for. And wow, I'm right here. And here we go. Let's go forward. All right. So that's just number one. It's the biggest concept of retaining financial freedom. This is where you have to start. You have to get your story straight. And you then if you need to free frame them, do so because it does make a powerful difference in how you move forward and how quickly you move forward. So number one is understand what your current money story is that is dancing around in your mind. And thus this will strengthen your awareness. Number two, now Let's shift the story and make yourself the heroine, not the victim. 
quote, when we own our money story and even tell it in such a way that we are the heroine as opposed to the victim, we lay down the first brush strokes for our new vision of financial freedom and peace. End quote. Northrop go- goes on to say, look at the comments in your past that could be looked at as not so good and address them. Find the silver lining. Look and see what they did for you instead of to you, end quote. Then once you have a larger perspective on how it all came together in your life trajectory, so I'm talking, for example, take my journey with regards to how long it took me to arrive at Le Papillon, wasn't until I was 40 that I have the house that I've always dreamt about, and then it took three years to customize it, but man, that journey led me to where I am, which is where exactly where I'd hoped I'd be. I didn't have the specifics in mind, but generally speaking, this is what I wanted to feel. So what happened for you rather than to you? I like how she has shifted that. Again, it shifts it from negative to positive. When you shift from being the victim to the heroine in your own story, you regain the power that has always been yours. So it is so important once you have reframed your story to remind yourself, this is happening for me. We always say, and I've shared this, now I've shared this in my most recent book and I've talked about it before, but everything that's happening to you, and this is a a quote from um, comedian Trevor Noah, and he states, everything is happening for you. This is the universe's way, whatever you want to call the universe, God, uh, whatever the terminology you use, something that's bigger than yourself, everything that's happening is happening for you. When you make that shift to this is happening for me, it may not be what I thought I wanted and it may not be forever, but it's teaching me something. It's giving me an opportunity to appreciate or it's actually helping me avoid something that I wouldn't want anyway. When you make that shift, you become the heroine of your story. You're no longer the victim of someone else's story. And that, again, is powerful. Shift the story. Make it a love story. That's number two. Three, trust your treasure map and now consciously own it. The winding story that you have been telling yourself up until this point may have had moments you have been told to not be proud of but actually you can be. Why? Well, what did it teach you? Most likely, beyond lessons specific to the occasion, it also deepened your gratitude beyond teaching you lessons that you learned upon reflection, most likely, but it can also deepen your appreciation so that when you finally step beyond the difficult times, you appreciate where you are far more and are less likely to take it for granted. Kate Northrup taught calls this a deepening of our financial consciousness. So trust that this treasure map, this journey you've been on is all about deepening something within you that will ensure that when you arrive at financial freedom, number one, you know it and you appreciate it, but you also will never take it for granted. So that's number three, trust your treasure map and now consciously own it. Number four, Understand how money stress and the stories you tell about your money are standing in the way of achieving your purpose. Quote, financial stress takes up bandwidth, period, and makes it much harder to hear your soul's calling, end quote. As I mentioned in number one, when we hold a negative story around our money, we expend energy. Conversely, when we shift the story to being constructive so that it makes us feel good, we gain energy. Northrup further explains, quote, in order to manifest what we want, we need to focus on feeling good. When we focus on feeling good instead of manifesting, for example, a specific red sports car, then we attract experiences that make us feel good, end quote. It's all about the energy we put out into the world. We cannot know or have expectations and we can't wait for those things to come to us if we don't put anything out first. But we can put the odds in our favor, show up and be present and bring our genuine selves. Northrop goes on to remind readers that even though just putting out an intention may seem too vague and not pinpointed enough, after all, aren't we supposed to have SMART goals? When we cling too tightly to whatever outcome we have to have and we have to hit these particular steps and this particular deadline, we actually 
are depleting our energy and we miss out on opportunities. Quote, your subconscious and the universe are far more creative and wise than you often give them credit. Focus on how you want to feel, organize your life to feel that way more often, and then sit back and watch how it all comes to pass, majestically unfolding. So number four, understand how money stress and the stories you tell about money are standing in the way of achieving your purpose. Number five, let go of the concept of security to claim your freedom. Quote, the things we hold on to in order to keep us safe are often the things that are preventing us from claiming our freedom. End quote. For years, I could not fathom stepping away from the regular and steady paycheck of public school teaching. After all, it came with health care and a pension, but my fear of letting go of this supposed security is what was standing in the way of pursuing my true purpose and also opening my eyes to what I was gaining, what I actually had to let go of. I didn't have to let go of my pension. It would always be mine. Yes, I wouldn't have the school's group insurance, but the true cost of health insurance for just myself is not as scary as I thought it would be. There was a learning curve, but it wasn't near as scary or at all as I had told myself or others had implied that it would be if I let go. And there's that word again, a story I told myself or a story I accepted that others told me. I took the story and I changed it and I changed my entire life for the better. She goes on to talk about the idea of job security and that there really isn't true job security. And I can attest to that in teaching. There were moments during recessions in the beginning of my teaching career that it was very likely and possible that I would have lost my job. So the idea of understanding what true financial freedom is and making sure we're not dependent on things that we shouldn't be dependent upon is also key to having a contentment about our financial situation. She does go into that quite a bit, and I'll let you explore that should you want to in the book. But I liked this idea of sometimes we think certain things are going to bring us financial security, and actually it's those things that we have to let go of to actually reach what we say we want. And I've said this before on the show, I, to out the outsider world, I likely look like I have more unknowns. Um, it's more insecure doing what I do. And they may or may not be right. I don't know. I'm not going to dwell on that. But the point is, I am more at peace. I am more Shannon. I'm owning the journey that led me to this opportunity to do what I do, writing, sharing what I, what I do and about contentment. But I also know that if I would have stayed in teaching, this would not have been possible. The inner peace, the inner calm that I feel now would not have been possible. Yes, that journey to this point was necessary. And I honor that and I'm grateful for that. But it wasn't meant to be the rest of my life story. And so it's not about tossing something aside and going, oh, that was bad. No, no, no. It's just part of your story. And that, too, is a shifting of, 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 of making it constructive rather than negative. So that's number five. Let go of the concept of security and claim your freedom. Number six, work through your resistance about understanding your money situation and how to rectify it. Quote, the more frustrated, irritated, and spaced out around your money you are, the more power is available to you financially when you're willing to work through that resistance, end quote. Often we imagine the worst, but when we finally gather up the courage to step into and face what we dread, we realize it isn't as uncomfortable or unapproachable as we thought. All of this is to say the most uncomfortable part of money frustrations is avoiding them because our mind runs wild in the most unhelpful and unhealthy ways. Use that energy constructively that you used to expend on worrying and avoiding and channel that energy to actually confronting your money situation so that you can begin striving forward on the path to reaching financial freedom. Northrop's book includes very clear ideas on how to first step out of the unwanted situations 
But then she continues on to share, and and this is the majority of her book, the latter half, um, with regards to it's more about what to do once you're stable. But she does address how to get out of certain situations as well. But it's, and this is why I like the book, it's largely to give you ideas on how to thrive. As a successful entrepreneur who had who has journeyed through the unwanted parts of money, Northrop, as she begins the book, explains everything about her journey. She had been in debt. She had been still pursuing things that were to her very worthy, but at the same time, there was an underlying truth that she wasn't accepting about why she was allowing herself to remain in debt. So she's been there and she's now out of it and she's highly motivated And she's always been highly motivated to thrive and share with the world what she can uniquely give. But initially, she didn't have this money know-how. But once she attained it, she began to apply the lessons and has been thriving in the realm of financial freedom ever since. So again, you're just shifting energy, using it constructively. So that's number six. Work through your resistance about understanding your money situation and how to rectify it. All right, I'm going to come back with five more steps to reach the outcome of financial freedom. But first, I want to introduce you to one sponsor. When you look at your hair, are you 100% happy? For years, I have tried so many different products under the sun to make my hair healthier, longer, stronger. But it wasn't until Vegamore that I began to finally see results. And I'm finally getting the hair I've always wanted. Vegamore has transformed my hair. Vegamore's holistic approach to hair health uses smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair. And with the help from Vegamore, you can get healthy, beautiful hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty free and never contain parabens or hormones. Having Vegamore as a go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer for my overall hair health. Using their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit, it's as simple as swapping out what I used to use and swapping in what they have and washing and conditioning my hair. With Vegamore, there is no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. As a simple, sophisticated listener, get the hair you have always wanted with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash sophisticate and use the promo code sophisticate to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sophisticate. Use code sophisticate to save 20% at vegamore.com slash sophisticate. Welcome back. Let's continue on the road to financial freedom, shall we? (laughs) Number seven, bring the self-love and mean it. In order to begin stepping toward and eventually bringing forth or to fruition the financial freedom you seek, your thoughts and how you speak to yourself about your situation must be constructive, well-intentioned, and positive. In other words, you must value yourself and believe at your core that you are enough just as you are and have something valuable that the world needs and you can uniquely give. Quote, if you can't see your value, the world doesn't give value back. For me, this is Kate speaking here, this manifested through debt. I didn't feel worthy of the extra time and attention necessary to live within my means. So I lived without financial integrity. And to be honest, there was a part of me that felt like crap about this. End quote. Northrop goes on to explain that, quote, by addressing my lack of self-love, I was also addressing my financial problems. End quote. She went on to explain that, quote, money is simply a stand-in for what we value. And often it is a stand-in for how much we value ourselves. Money flows to those who value themselves, end quote. Where does the self-love concept come in here? Well, it comes in everywhere. Knowing you are enough just as you are, knowing you have something within you right now that the world needs that only you can uniquely give. Know this because it is true. Live this truth through, yes, how you approach money, how you spend it, but non-monetarily, how you engage with others. Do you set boundaries? Do you share your voice, even if what you are sharing is not wanted by those you are surrounded by? 
If it's not, it's the way of the world guiding you to somewhere else, to other people, so that you can begin to find your purpose. Often the term asset comes up when we sit down with our financial advisor and we list our monetary assets, our accounts, our property, etc. But we often never include the most valuable asset. Northrop asserts that, quote, the most valuable asset in your life is you, end quote. So do the inner work of getting to know yourself and then valuing yourself in the decisions you make in order for your outer world to not only fall together into a beautiful love story you enjoy living each day, but for you to discover how we just cannot plan everything. And we have to trust and let go at some point, often far earlier than we had planned. So back to the question, what does self-love look like when it comes to managing successfully our money? Pay attention to your money, how you spend it, why you spend it, the interest rates, the due dates, the savings rate, etc., etc. Why? Well, do you remember when we talked about being an adult in a relationship? And this is back in episode 287, and I'll link it on the show notes. I included the five key A's to being one half of a healthy, loving, respectful relationship. One of the five A's is to give and receive attention. We want to have someone's attention to know we are seen. And when we are seen, when we feel seen, we blossom, we open up, we grow closer to one another. The same is true with money. Paying attention to your money is a form of self-love because love involves attention and what we give energy to grows. Our knowledge, our awareness, our financial assets, thus our financial freedom. So number seven is bring the self-love and mean it. Number eight, speaking of trusting without knowing, remember this equation. Here we go. Here's the equation that's shared in the book. Self-value plus paying attention to your money plus giving more value equals receiving more value. Now at this point in your journey, as you are rewriting your money story into your love story, You have knowledge of yourself and you are engaging as your full self, being more vulnerable, putting down the mask. Sometimes you are dismissed or ignored, but that is just more valuable information of which direction to go next. Your sincerity, your passion, your full presence will be noticed, but you cannot force it. You just have to show up again and again. Keep trying. Not the same thing, but different things until something clicks, a window opens and then a door. Mind your money as you go, but give value before you receive it. Note this equation. The universe has to know you value what you offer. You value yourself and that you have something to offer. It doesn't mean you know everything. It doesn't mean you aren't still a student, but you have to start somewhere. So start where and with what you sincerely love and are passionate about. And then when the universe, i.e. people and opportunities, cross your path, step toward them and say yes. So number eight, speaking of trusting without knowing, remember this important equation. Number nine, practice regular self-care. Quote, giving value to the world feels like a fountain where the water spurts out and then falls back into a holding vessel and then gets recycled back into the system to come out again in the fountain. It's a perpetual source of water, and it's a great metaphor for our own energy and creativity. Giving value to the world feels like this. You have plenty more to give, and it's sustainable and feels nourishing to you at the same time as you are nourishing others. Then there are fountains like a sprinkler, where the water is just shooting into the grass, and it's not sustainable, end quote. Don't mistake what I am saying that you should put yourself and your ideas out there to the point of exhaustion. No, 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 no. You must take care of yourself. You must nurture your creativity, your wellspring, whatever that is for what you do with great passion. Pointing out bluntly and frankly, Northrop writes, quote, exhaustion, stress, and burnout do not result in great work. Your best self cannot shine through if you're constantly burdened by putting others before yourself, end quote. And I'll provide a link to a couple of posts I've written that have detailed examples of self-care. And you're going to tailor this to yourself. You know what you need to feel nourished. Other people may not agree. Other people may do different things. Good for them. Let them be them. 
You be you, take care of yourself. What is it that you need? All right. And I'll provide those links on the show notes. So number nine is practice regular self-care. Number 10, remembering that this is a journey. Your love story will not transpire in a day. Quote, the sheer awareness that self-love, valuing your money and giving and receiving value are important will incite changes in your life. End quote. I want to leave with this last in thought, and I have one more item on our list today. But before I get to that, I want you to remember this. If you're, you're still on the journey, you're almost there. You're making a lot of progress. You've made it through one through nine. Just remember, this takes time. I want to share this lasting thought with you because I cannot tell you when your financial freedom will eventually occur. It may be next month. Maybe It may be six months from now, a year or a couple years from now. But I do know that accepting the unknown is part of reaching your financial freedom. But it begins by finding the value you can uniquely give and to give it in a balanced way paired with nourishing yourself along the way. Think of it as networking with the world. The world doesn't know what you can offer unless you express it clearly, meaning you have to act. You have to be serious and you have to be brave. You can have fun. I don't mean serious, like, you know, no laughing, no fun. Absolutely not. But you have to, you have to invest. You have to put yourself out there you have to make yourself vulnerable. No half-heartedness, no rashness either. You can't just jump without really knowing why you're doing it. Have a purpose. Know your reason why. You don't know how or when or even if the person you connected with or the business you connected with will offer an opportunity down the road. They may actually talk to someone years from now and you keep bouncing to the front of their mind because of what you do and what you do so uniquely well. And they finally found a person who is in need of what you can offer. You just don't know. Here's an example. So it was in 2012. It was the first holiday vacation that I was able to to take my dogs, Oscar and Norman, with me to the coast. And we actually stayed three nights at the coast in our own little vacation rental. I was never able to afford that before, but I was so excited. So this is this is part of my financial freedom road. Wasn't there yet, but I was getting there and I was just so tickled. And this place was just Oof, perfect for us dogs could stay. It wasn't as expensive as some places and it was two blocks from the ocean. So I wrote a detailed post about it, profiling. It was a very sincere post. It's, I'm not going to write about something I don't generally care about. And I didn't even know the owner. Well, the owner found out about the post, reached out to me. This is in 2012. And so when I came back the next time, because I kept going a couple times a year and I still do, um, <laughs> she thanked me. She just, and so we had a long uh, chat and talk. We were at the, co- when I was at the coast and she let me tour a few things. We just had a lovely conversation. We just connected. Nothing was planned. Nothing. It was just a con- genuine connection, a show of gratitude. And I think it was 2016. So I had just moved to Bend. So 2015. So three years later, um, the owner, um, she lived in Portland and she had been on a morning talk show and the the producer of this talk show was looking for more guests and she recommended me because she knew about my blog and my podcast and she suggested me and lo and behold I ended up being on um, AM Northwest on the ABC affiliate in Portland for a handful of years up until the pandemic and it all began with Tracy Hopday who's been a guest on this podcast mentioning me without me ever thinking about that kind of event transpiring. But I wrote a genuine post and then I just let the universe take me where it will. That's just one example. You cannot know, but you generally just need to keep putting yourself out there. You do that magic starts to occur and you don't know when and you don't know what it's going to be, but you'll know that it's right for you. So just something to keep in mind. So number 10 is remembering that this is a journey. Your love story will not transpire in a day. And number 11, end on the, I want to end on this note. I just mentioned that it's a journey. It takes time. It will not transpire in a day, but it will transpire. And this is what it will look and feel like. Quote, what does it mean to be truly financially free? The first part is purely mathematical. You are financially free when your passive or residual leveraged income is greater than your living expenses. The second part is less tangible, but no doubt equally important. You're financially free to the degree that money trips you up far less often, and you have a loving relationship with money, 
and that you truly value yourself and your contribution to the world. End quote. Northrop goes on to equate reaching financial freedom to reaching the state of enlightenment. Quote, it is practice and may not be 100% achieved in this lifetime, but little by little, we can value ourselves a little bit more each day. We can show up more fully in life to provide value and we can heal our relationship with money baby step by baby step until well into our 90s and beyond, end quote. In other words, the more you learn, and so long as you apply what you learn, what you offer to the world and your ability to offer it becomes enriched. And while you may still run into temporary roadblocks, the knowledge you have through awareness and being present will ensure you make the best decisions to move yourself forward well. Much like living a life of contentment. We cannot control the stock market, the weather, other people, but we can control ourselves, and that includes our mind, and thus the stories we tell ourselves and accept as true. Being content is to rest in self-assurance that you can navigate well through those unwanted moments, because what you give to the world is of value. So number 11 is just trust that when you keep following these steps, financial freedom will transpire and you will reach and live in financial freedom each day of your life. So number 11 is financial freedom will transpire. Trust and keep giving. Nourish, keep giving. (laughs) Apply these 11 steps, or actually 10, because 11 is just the end result. And in time, it will happen. Probably more quickly than you realize. So you may remember in episode 326, so a couple of years ago, Deepak Chopra's book, Abundance, The Inner Path to Wealth, um, was the primary discussion. And I've linked that episode. But he speaks to what Northrop is addressing in the second part of financial freedom, this idea that it's less tangible, but it's equally, if not more so, important. If you haven't listened or read that episode, because you can read the notes as well, I highly recommend you do as it furthers the conversation about what it means to attain wealth through finding and sharing your purpose. Here's a last quote from the book, Money, A Love Story, to ponder. Financial freedom, this idea of money, having a love story with money, it's about speaking a unique truth that only you are capable of articulating in the precise way that you do. Your financial well-being is directly linked to your ability to be of the utmost service in this world. Your commitment to financial freedom is a commitment to the betterment of all beings. When you set yourself free, you set others free. You give them permission to break the shackles of should and how it's supposed to be and live a life of their own design. End quote. That last phrase, your life is is going to be unique because what you can give to the world that will contribute positively will be unique. And so while you may be inspired by others, you may be drawn to something that they have created or that they do, the question to ask yourself is why? What is the feeling I want to feel? What? And then go within and figure out what it is that is speaking from within and tap into that. Strengthen it, hone it, polish it. Keep trying to give it to the world. It'll improve. You'll become more expert with each practice, with each attempt, whatever it is. And then your life becomes its own design. And no, it won't look like somebody else's. Mine does not look like most people I know. But I'm not comparing. That's the other part of this journey. Stop comparing. Be inspired instead. I've linked the book. I highly recommend you read it. She has a strong voice. You hear her voice as you're reading. If you follow her on Instagram, um, you might know her voice already, literally. Um, But the book is linked on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 354. And I'm going to be right back because I have a book that's going to further this idea of shifting the stories to be more constructive that I highly recommend picking up if that concept of today's conversation spoke to you. (music) 
So this week's Petit Plaisir is a book that I actually read just before I read Money, A Love Story. And when I read Money, A Love Story, I said, whoa, these two dovetail beautifully. So the book is titled Mind Your Mindset, The Science That Shows Success Starts With Your Thinking. And it's by best-selling authors, uh, a husband and wife team, Michael Hyatt and Megan Hyatt Miller. And they write it together, as, 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 as I just said there, but you, you, they have their own journey through discovering this, uh, this truth. And they bring in all sorts of research and neurological research and psychological research. But they also are on their own journey and they discovered their own oopses and mistakes when their stories were not constructive. Um, whether it's in their personal life for Megan or their professional life for Michael. And what I, I mean, my book is completely marked up. I mean, it's just, I like this book so much. It was, it was refreshing. It was, um, it reiterated a lot of what I knew to be true, but it also gave more specific examples of how we get stuck in unconstructive stories. So it could be the language we use, that's one way we get stuck in it, right? So disempowered language is an early warning sign of a false story. So pay attention to the words you choose and the emotional tone that drives them. We just say things out of habit. So you have to be intentionally aware. So again, we're hearing these terms being repeated, awareness, right? This idea of just being aware of what we surround ourselves with. And that includes what our mind is saying. Um, What I also love about this book is the idea that shifting our story about risk in, in order to live a life of contentment, we are going to have to accept that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And generally speaking, that's just a, you know, fact. We have an idea. We've put, we've put a lot of energy and effort into making tomorrow be a day that we want it to be. So it's not a matter of, oh, it's going to be completely shocking and scary. No, no, no. It's just this idea of risk is unavoidable, but it's also not a bad thing. And they talk about this too, because our brain, if we don't understand it, is going to just stay in survival mode. Risk is bad. Change is bad. But once we have control of our mind, we can change the story and we can thrive. And as it pertains to the money story, if there are stories we're telling ourselves that are not constructive, it's going to be a lot harder to get out of the ruts we don't want to be in, but we aren't pursuing avenues to help ourselves get out of them. And the one we talked about today is reframe your story. That's the first step to changing the story, to getting yourself on the path to achieving financial freedom. So I'm going to just pull one more passage from the book. The title of this chapter is called Trading Certainty for Results. And it's this idea of welcoming the previously defined uh, outcomes that were failures as opportunities for growth and creating more connections for new ideas and inspiration. So they describe the mind that tells the stories as the narrator. And that's helpful to personify it because then we can rewrite the narration. This idea of accepting uncertainty can be a good thing is something they address here. And they say, after all, success in life often comes down to our tolerance for the discomfort of uncertainty. First, recognize that internal resistance is normal. That's a huge first step. Second, embrace the opportunity for growth. And third, separate yourself from your story, which involves the practice of mindfulness, where you step back and observe your thoughts and you're not at the mercy of them. That is when you can change your story. You can rewrite the narration. I could read this whole book to you. It is so good. But I thought it really dovetailed beautifully with this whole concept of your money story and creating a love story with it. So again, the book is Mind Your Mindset. It just came out earlier this year, I believe in February. Actually, it came out in January 2023. Mind Your Mindset, the science that shows success starts with your thinking. I will link to it on the show notes. But if you're looking to genuinely change and permanently change how constructive your mind is to achieving your goals in the life you want, this is a book to check out. 
I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I want to take a moment to give a few shout outs to listeners who took the time to write a review for this show. And I, I have to say, I, I was I was deeply humbled. Oh my gosh, so chuffed. I, I, I kind of speechless, to be honest with you. It was These were very kind, lovely reviews. Um, and for everyone who's taken the time over the years to write, um, even just rate positively this show, I, I thank you. This show continues to, to thrive because of you. So this um, reviewer titled the review humbling, inspiring, and engaging five stars from Obacker 19, regardless of where you are in your journey towards crafting a life that aligns your head, hands, and heart. This is a must listen from honest self-reflective notes that we're all often thinking about in the background to the everyday obstacles that challenge us to live with the simple elements of class that we're all striving for. Shannon's episodes are critical threads that pull you forward along the way. Highly recommend listening and subscribing. Thank you so much, Obacker19. Really appreciate your kind words. And this next review is from Lois L-E-W. Elevating your everyday five stars. I have been listening to Shannon's podcast for years and reading her blog since she started writing it. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Lois. That was back in 2010. (laughs) The thing I appreciate most about her is her authenticity. In a world full of distractions, naysayers, and and lowered standards, she continues to be a beacon to those of us who desire to self-actualize, cooking and eating well, living a healthy and fulfilling life. Shannon is doing it. I love how she adds beauty to her world one step at a time. Merci. Well, Mercy Lewis, I so appreciate, again, your words, your kindness, your taking the time. I know where you're alive. I know lives are busy. Um, That means so much. And lastly, again, like I said, it all came last week. I was over the moon. I honestly didn't expect this. And actually, this happened on the day that I was giving gratitude to my house. I have to say that the, the serendipity was beautiful. And I, I my, tear, my eyes welled up a little bit. It was just a beautiful day. A reframing for the journey and then just to receive these. You have no idea, you three, how much this all meant to me. Um, so Logan um, wrote... Uh, uh, this final review, she wrote five stars all the way around from the podcast to the blog. Everything Shannon shares is exquisite. The simple sophisticate has changed my perspective on life and encouraged me to live every day to its absolute fullest, making every day a simple luxury. Thank you very much. I am so grateful to hear you all are enjoying the show. And um, I'm excited because the next episode will be on the 19th and it is an interview for Francophiles and those who love flowers through the Parisian approach. Sandra Sigmund is joining me to talk about her new book, French Blooms. And we talk about flowers, yes, in her book, yes. We also talk about, surprise, surprise, contentment and everyday life and Paris and France in general. So I look forward to bringing that conversation to you on Wednesday, April 19th. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to let you know that beginning tomorrow, running through the 9th, so April 6th through the 9th, is the annual once a year event that takes place for membership to become a member at a permanent savings. Um, This only happens, like I said, once a year. It's happening from the 6th to the 9th of April. You'll need to sign up for the weekly or monthly newsletter to be alerted to the codes that will give you the discount. So you're going to get 20% off versus 15% off the annual, 15% off versus 10% for the quarterly, and 10% versus nothing at all off of the, the, the monthly membership for top tier. So if you have ever thought about becoming a top tier member, you want to get signed up for the weekly or monthly newsletter, which is free, and I will be sending out. So do it today. Sign up for those newsletters quickly because I send out the promo code at the end of today. Um, you'll get the promo code and you'll sign up. And again, it's permanent savings. You will get this rate for the rest of your membership so long as it stays active. Um, remember, you can always pause your membership if you want to take a, a budget break for whatever reason and, and then resume when you want to and maintain that price. But if you cancel it, you will lose the price you have. So um, anyway, 6th or the 9th once a year membership sale, permanent savings. 
Um, if you have any questions, just email me. I'm here. I want to get you this membership if you want it. Um, and I'm happy to help. So email me if you have questions. Info at the simply luxurious life.com or Shannon at the simply luxurious life.com. Okay, I've talked on and on and on, on. I'm so grateful you joined me today. And uh, find everything we talked about on the show notes at the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 354. Today's episode is titled How to Find Your Financial Freedom, The Importance of Understanding, Writing, and Living Your Love Story with Money. Thank you so much for joining me. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co or the simply luxurious life.com for more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique simply luxurious life pick up my new book which became both a bestseller and number one new release in france travel the road to le papillon daily meditations on true contentment available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate The Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour.